the morning market kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, one hour to go until they had opening bell. And we got markets in positive territory so far, looking for a positive open right near record territory if we open where we are right now. You have S&P futures up almost 14 points at 3,333. NASDAQ futures up 60 at 92.30. Dow futures up about 75 points, trading at 29,254. 10-year yield, excuse me, 1.77% as we start things off, and we're going to jump over to the VIX this morning. As you would expect, the market, positive territory, the VIX back under 1250 to 1243. Got a little bit of a spike yesterday and some negative action in the market above 13. That having to do with the coronavirus, the first victim, unfortunately, the first patient, I should say, in the U.S., that climbing to 13, but it doesn't take long for the market to get back to record territory as the Dow looks to open at almost 100 points higher. And we have the S&Ps up about four tenths percent. NASDAQ right now up almost seven tenths percent in the green. We'll start things off and we're going to kick it off with the indices. There's your Dow 30. Put things in context. There was the fall off yesterday when the first reported patient in Washington state had contracted the coronavirus which had been isolated to China prior to this. It's now six different countries. I believe that that virus has spread. A little bit of fears reverberating. The market trades from 29,245 down to almost 29,100. But as you can see, it doesn't take long. The market finishes up at about 29,150, and overnight we climb higher. Some of that having to do with earnings. IBM with strong numbers. Netflix with strong numbers as well. We'll get into those numbers briefly. Dow, 29,246 right now. NASDAQ 100, quite a rebound. A little bit of a different chart here, as you can see. There's your fall off to correlate to where we were in the Dow. But boy, oh boy, talk about climbing higher than NASDAQ 100, above 92.40 briefly, currently trading 92.28. There's your S&Ps as well, eclipsing where we were yesterday, looking to open at record territory, actually made a high of 33.36. Did we get above there? Yeah, 33.36, the high print on the S&P futures at about 10.30 last night, just under that level of 33.31. Crude oil backing off a bit, some volatility in crude. Yesterday, we got up to about 58.67. Crude trading lower with the market as well. And you know what? Let me get, uh, yes, we're all set. Uh, crude oil now under $58, trading at $57.75. Gold contract, $15.54. You see the action yesterday for gold, pretty much just under where we were as of yesterday afternoon. And the euro US dollar, just under 111. The euro trading 110.87. In terms of what else, it is earnings season. Netflix, after the bell last night, a much anticipated number. And by all intents and purposes, they had some volatility last night, but it looks like they delivered as Netflix shares trading higher a bit this morning. Netflix added 8.8 .8 million subscribers. We'll get into the numbers down here. So they have earnings per share, a buck 30, revenue 5.47 billion, not bad for 90 days, right? Versus 5.45. Domestic, 550,000 versus 589,000. International, there's your number. 8.33 million versus 7.17 million. That what the market is especially liking. Now, domestic, I, I believe that speaks to North America. So U.S. and Canada. In the U.S., it actually added about 420,000 subscribers. For the first quarter in 2020, Netflix expects to report earnings of buck sixty-six on revenue of $5.73 billion. That's compared to estimates of about a buck twenty and five point seven six, so a beat there in terms of earnings, buck sixty six, what they're looking for in the first quarter. And guidance, the gum the company also expects to add seven million paid subscribers in the first quarter, but that is short of the seven point eight six million. Company reported negative free cash flow of one point seven billion. That was a negative for the quarter and expects to see negative free cash flow of about 2.5 billion in 2020. Netflix reiterated that its cash burn peaked in 2019 and said it's now moving slowly toward being cash free cash flow positive in the future. Pretty remarkable on those types of numbers. 
$5.7 billion in 90 days, they are spending that much money on production of content that they are actually negative in cash flow. We're on a glide path slowly towards positive free cash flow. Netflix CEO Reed Hastings said on the earnings call, we're excited about that, but that's not coming from shrinking back our content spending. That's coming from increasing the revenue and operating income. And to jump over to Netflix shares and see where we're trading at this morning, a little bit of a decline, actually, since I last checked on it. So we closed yesterday at 338.11, and we're within $1 of that price right now at 338.97. This is a 15-minute chart for a little bit of a shorter time frame. There's your five-minute chart. Talk about some volatility when they first come out with that number. You were anywhere from a high, and this is in the first five minutes, we traded up to a high of 352, a low right now, a low on that bar of 331. You got a brief spike. Now, I'm not sure. I mean, that looks like it almost could be just a one print spike to 367. The remarkable thing here, Thinkorswim platform, they have that one day expected move, which they take from the volatility priced into the options at the money puts and calls. Netflix was looking for about $25 of movement. So uh, a call was going to cost you at the money about $12 to $13. A put was going to cost you at the money a similar $12 to $13. If you were on the other side absorbing that premium, boy, oh boy, Netflix looking to open almost flat this morning on those earnings numbers. In terms of what else, jumping around, we had IBM numbers as well. They beat, rising as much as 5% on strong, strong earnings report. Revenue grew slightly in the quarter, but that's a big one because they had five quarters of decline. So first quarter in five that they have revenue actually growing. Morgan Stanley had cut IBM last week. There are the numbers for IBM. Earnings, 471 a share. They were looking for 469. Revenue, 21.77 billion. The number was 21.64 billion that analysts were looking for. Revenue grew slightly on an annualized basis, IBM said after the statement excuse me, said in a statement after it had fallen five quarters in a row, after the conclusion of an upgrade cycle for its Z14 mainframe computer, the company has been shipping a new model, the Z15. Looking at the quarterly revenue, you can see, I mean, the trend, they might have grown for the first time in five quarters, but boy, oh boy, if you look for a trend there since 2011, 2012, there's really no uptick just yet. In terms of guidance, IBM said that for 2020, expects 1335 earnings, the number was looking for 1329 for estimates, pretty close to what they were looking for. It implies a 4% increase from the prior year. IBM's revenue will go up year over year in 2020. The CFO told analysts in a conference call after the call, the stock was up 3%. Checking in on IBM shares this morning. We got some volatility last night, as you may expect. And again, these spikes, um, that could just be one trade, two trades firing off. There's some volatility for you on five minutes. So we closed yesterday at 139.17. We spike as high as 147, but still up about $5 right now, trading at 144.49 for IBM Big Blue, up about almost 4 to 5% so far this morning. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to be coming back. We'll look at what else we have going on in the market this morning. Earnings today on tap. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on markets. Dow futures up about 67. S&P's up about 12. NASDAQ futures up about 58. In terms of what kind of news is shaping the day out here, pretty interesting in terms of opposing views. Jamie Dimon out here says his one big worry, negative interest rates. You have the CEO, the biggest and best bank out there in the world, you could say, says that negative interest rates are one of the only things that concern him in a market that's otherwise in a quote-unquote Goldilocks place. The only thing I have trepidation about is negative interest rates, QE, and the diversion between stock prices and bond prices and yield and stuff like that. Diamond said on CNBC's Squawk Box. Of course, you have Davos, World Economic Forum, President Trump out there with a speech between about 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. this morning. It's kind of one of the great experiments of all time, and we still don't know what the ultimate outcome is. I would agree with that myself. Um, negative interest rates have been used by central banks in Japan and Europe to try and stimulate their stubbornly stagnant economies. Economists are divided over their effectiveness to reignite economic growth, and some fear negative rates can keep growth subdued rather than lift it. There's just commentary from CNBC, but interesting. They have been used in conjunction with quantitative easing in the U.S. and abroad, where central banks purchase as assets like T-bills. I think it's very hard for central banks to forever make up for bad policy elsewhere, Diamond said. That puts them in a trap. We're a little bit in that trap today with rates so low around the world. I would never buy a negative rate bond, not unless I was forced, Diamond added. In history, whenever you've seen anything like that, it doesn't necessarily end well. The CEO of the biggest bank in the world saying that he, with their money, would never touch a negative interest rate bond. And fundamentally, folks, right, think about it. Why are you going to loan somebody money if they're going to give you less money back? When, when you go to school, right, you have consume or save. If you consume, you get gratification now. If you save, you get more gratification later. You save, that money grows, you get more. That's the incentive to save. If you're saving and that money is going to go down because you have a negative interest rate, where does that rely? It's almost the foundation of everything that goes into the economy. So I say that because in the next sentence, you have President Trump saying that our GDP would be near 4% and the Dow could be 10,000 points higher if it weren't for the Fed, basically, meaning that our interest rates are too high. Keep that in context of what we just heard from the CEO of the biggest and best and most profitable bank in the world, J.P. Morgan. You have President Trump 
He said the U.S. economic growth would be closer to 4 percent if it weren't for lingering effects of the Federal Reserve rate hikes. But we had Boeing. We had big strike with GM. We had things happen very unusual. Now, with all of that, had we not done the big raise on interest, big raise on interest, folks, keep this in context, I think we would have been close to 4 percent, and I could see 5 to 10,000 points higher in the Dow. Folks, we just came off a 30 percent year in 2019. Interest rates, I believe the 10-year, let's get it up, 1.77 percent that you are paying on a 10-year U.S. Treasury as of this morning. And you have the president talking about that interest rates are way too high and it's the only thing holding back our economy. And then you have the CEO of the biggest bank in the world talking about that the only thing he fears is that interest rates actually go too low, go negative, and that that messes with the economy we have going on. Uh, president Trump told CNBC on Wednesday U.S. growth would have been close to 4 percent if it weren't for those rate hikes. That was a big blip that should not have taken place. It should not have happened, but it's one of those things. We had Boeing. We had the strike with GM. We had things happen. The president also suggested the stock market would be even higher than its already record-setting highs if the Fed hadn't raised rates so quickly before cutting them three times in 2019. Now, with all of that, had we not done the big raise on interest, I think we would have been close to 4 percent. 4% is kind of this uh, magical number that likes to be touted out there. We got it briefly when we had the tax cuts last year. Keep in mind, those tax cuts have added trillions of dollars to the national debt for a brief rise in the GDP, which now seems to kind of stem back. Not much investment in terms of capital expenditure, which seemed to be the touted reason for that. You cut corporate tax, corporate tax rates, right? Those companies take that money, invest in capital expenditure, that grows the economy, that grows the base that's going to be paying taxes. None of that has happened, folks. The debt keeps rising. And I could see that five to 10,000 points on the Dow. Well, you make your own decisions, folks, but pair that with what you have on Jamie Dimon saying this morning. I find that pretty interesting. Other news out there. Airline stocks, United Airlines, profits surged nearly 40 percent on cheaper fuel and strong demand. United posted net income of $614 million during the fourth quarter, up 39 percent from a year earlier period on revenues of $10.89 billion. Revenue is almost 4 percent higher than a year earlier and slightly above estimates. The carrier's per share earnings came in at $267 compared with $265. The Chicago-based carrier reported earnings on revenue Tuesday that narrowly beat the estimates. We went in $614 million. United expanded capacity in the fourth quarter by 2.6 percent. That's a big number to expand their capacity when you're talking about an airline that is so mammoth large already. United is one of the U.S. airlines, along with American and Southwest, that Boeing 736, that has the Boeing 737 MAX planes in its fleet. Those planes, of course, grounded Boeing, dealing with their own woes. We'll get into that chart in a moment, because yesterday they came out with the fact that, while well, they, the regulators, that they're not going to be flying until maybe June or July at least this year. Boeing's new timeline is far later than analysts were expecting and presents another headache for the airlines, United being one of them. So United executives holding an earnings call 10.30 a.m. this morning, jumping over to the UAL chart to see how they are faring so far. There's your action on United. Closed yesterday at 85.79. You see the earnings coming out about 4.15. We trade actually lower at one point, but this morning right now looks to be up about a dollar at 86.75 for United. Johnson & Johnson also out with their earnings this morning. Beats Wall Street expectations on profit, but missing on revenue. Litigation expenses. A number of these companies talking about litigation this, uh, this earnings season. $264 million compared to $1.29 billion a year ago. Pretty remarkable, the amount of money that lawyers make for these corporations as they continue just to plow through the legal system to get what they want. Here's what the company reported. Adjusted earnings per share, buck 88 versus a buck 67. Revenue, this is 90 days of revenue, folks. 20.74 billion, just a hair under the 20.8 that they were looking for. We delivered strong underlying sales and earnings growth in 2019, driven by the strength of our pharmaceutical business, accelerating performance in our medical devices business, and improved profitability in our consumer business. Chairman and CEO Alex Gorski said in a press release, press release, J&J's pharmaceutical business posted revenue of 10.54 billion, 3.5% increase year on year. The consumer unit, which makes beauty products such as Neutrogena, 
They generated $3.5 billion in revenue, up 0.9%, and the medical device unit reported $6.63 billion. That's down half a percent. And there's your litigation, $264 million compared to $1.29 billion. And despite the litigation, J&J &J shares have increased more than 2% so far this year. The S&P has climbed about 3 Checking in on J&J &J shares this morning. There's your action. And you know what? We hurt. We were higher. But that is a brief reprieve. The earnings out at about 6.30. Gotta love the Thinkorswim platform. You can see exactly when that earnings call began at about 50 minutes ago, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Johnson & Johnson closed at 149.27, bidding 147.47. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back to finish up the show. We'll talk about earnings today on TAP. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up about 11 points, just hanging out where we've been for the whole half hour. Got to mention it, Tesla, quite a day yesterday. Tesla becoming a $100 billion company. That puts them above Volkswagen, now the second biggest car company in the world, only behind Toyota, which I believe is about $198 billion. But boy, oh boy, just charging higher overnight as well. Now looking to open at $574, closed yesterday at $547. We mentioned Boeing. Boeing, there's your headline from yesterday. 
does not expect regulators to sign off on that 737 MAX until mid-2020. Just pulling up that chart because, boy, they just continue to face the woes. There's the slide yesterday on that news, looking today to open a little bit lower at 31010. In terms of what else going on, earnings today on tap. Alaska Air after the market. We've gotten some of these before the market already. We had Abbott as well, jumping over to Abbott shares, ABT. Out with their earnings, looking a little bit higher on their numbers. There's the number. Let's see what they came in with. 95 cents a share. The estimate was 91 cents a share. I believe they'll have their earnings call at some point. And a reminder, check out the front page of TFNN.com. A morning market recap. I'm doing these every morning. This morning, lots to talk about out there, whether it's Netflix, whether it's IBM. So there's your Netflix numbers. There's your IBM numbers. You also have... The CDC confirming the U.S. the first U.S. case of the coronavirus. Weekly mortgage applications. We didn't talk about that, but pulling back slightly after a strong start to 2020. You got the United Airlines numbers. There's your chart along with everything happening this morning, whether it's gold, oil, the VIX back under 13, and your notes and bonds. And as we wrap it up, don't forget, folks, right after this program, Larry Pezzavento, he's going to be coming up live with Trade What You See. And check it out, a week from today, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry's going to be in there with subscribers for 90 minutes from 4 till 5.30. He'll be talking about many different topics. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Can't beat that. I appreciate you joining me. I'm back here every day, 8.30 till 9. Stay tuned, folks. we got Larry Pezzavento coming up right now. Have a great day.